Tiger's red. Sewer is going into the red. Air's pretty rough. Banging around hard. Do you have me in sight? Repeat, do you have me in sight? This man is set on flying faster than anyone has ever flown a propeller airplane. He tears through the sky at the breaking point for pilot and plane, reaching for the high ground. He has to topple a legend, a record which no man has been able to break for 30 years. His name is Daryl Greenemeyer. In 1932, Jimmy Doolittle set a new world airspeed record by pushing the stubby and highly unstable GB racer up to 294 miles an hour. He was one of the few pilots that flew this plane and lived to tell about it. Three years later, this plane upset Doolittle's record by flashing through the speed traps at 352 miles an hour. It was a radically advanced airplane for its day, almost as unique as the man who built and flew it. Howard Hughes. In 1939, the German Air Force prepared a special racing plane just for the world propeller speed record. The sleek Messerschmitt racer, flown by Fritz Wendel, set an unbelievable mark of 469 miles an hour. For over 30 years, the German speed record has been invincible. A challenge to men who fly and build propeller airplanes. Now, in the jet age, most have conceded the old record to be the final one. But on the hot California desert, a small group of men labor for one more charge at the windmill. Daryl Greenemeyer and his crew pour sweat and muscle into rebuilding the engine burned out in last year's futile attempt. If you had to put a label on Daryl Greenemeyer, it would be Pilot, with a capital P. He eats, sleeps, and dreams flying. Not just any kind of flying, but the fastest, highest, lowest, and most teeth-rattling kind of flying imaginable. At work, he test flies airplanes such as the world's fastest jet aircraft, the Lockheed SR-71. miles an hour, almost too high to see the ground, Greenemeyer carries out his engineering test pilot assignment. Greenemeyer is a quiet, unassuming guy with strangers, a man of few words with a faraway look in his eyes. Like many pro pilots, he only really opens up with those who know and share the strange fascination of flight. In this small, exclusive world, Daryl stands out as a leader, a doer. In unspoken terms, they rate him the best pilot around, a guy with a natural gift for flying. I've been flying now for about 15 years. That's how I've made my living right from the start. I've flown all kinds of aircraft, jets, transports, private planes, and ex-military fighters like this Bearcat. It's hard to describe what it is about flying that gets in your blood. You can have freedom, power, speed, and a real sense of physical and mental accomplishment all in one package if you do it well. Of course, it can get hairy, too, but uh, I guess good things don't come easy. Daryl Greenemeyer is 32 years old. A bachelor, he lives alone in a house cluttered with airplane parts, engines, and various mechanical odds and ends. He plays several musical instruments, likes to ski, drive fast automobiles, and has even taken a fling at drag racing. He enjoys pizza and beer, but doesn't smoke. A fairly ordinary guy except when he climbs into an airplane. This is his personal proving ground, a restless place. Flying at over three times the speed of sound would be enough for most any man. 
But Greenemeyer isn't satisfied with flying the fastest jet. He's decided he's going to fly the world's fastest propeller airplane as well. As many have discovered, this is easier said than done, especially under the strict conditions necessary to certify the record. Neither industry nor military are interested in the propeller record today, so Darrell and a handful of friends must do it alone. They work long, hard hours on the machine Darrell hopes to coax up to 500 miles an hour. A lot to ask of an airplane that was at its prime when Greenemeyer was only eight years old. The Navy Bearcat seemed to be all propeller and engine. Built strictly for quarter horse speed and dog fighting, Grumman's F-8F was one of the last propeller-driven fighters made for the U.S. Navy. Succeeding the famous Wildcat and Hellcat fighters, its mission was interception of Japanese suicide aircraft. Retiring from active duty, a small number of Bearcats were auctioned off to persons looking for fast transportation or an unusual conversation piece. One of these planes would eventually find its way to Daryl Greenemeyer for a new and highly unusual mission. After the Bearcat excelled, but now only one thing is important, flat out speed. This means stripping all non-essentials, then taking the basic airplane and adding, smoothing and refining every piece and part. When air racing picked up again, or there was some talk of uh, air racing coming back, I wanted to get an airplane and, uh, and go up and join the crowd and, and see what this racing was like. Uh, at the time, the easiest airplane for me to get my hands on was a Bearcat. Of course, it was a stock Bearcat uh, sitting in the field, needing a lot of work. Well, I, I realized that it was going to take a little bit more than a stock airplane to compete with the, the guys that were uh, running in the unlimited class. So I started in the program of modifying it to uh, uh, see if I couldn't clean it up aerodynamically and make it go faster. Many major changes had to be made to the nose and engine, propeller, wing roots, wingspan, wing tips, cockpit and canopy. With these modifications, the Bearcat was ready to race, and so was Greenemeyer. Every September, the clear desert sky near Reno, Nevada, is filled with the roar of powerful racing engines. This is the site of the National Championship Air Races. The main event here is the unlimited class race. To enter, the airplane must have a propeller and a piston engine. Other than that, the sky is the limit. This has got to be the biggest, most powerful form of motor racing anywhere. When the pace plane pulls up, the race is on. 125 miles around an eight mile oval course. The rules are simple. Stay outside the oval and go fast. It gets a little hectic, especially on the start, because you've got uh, oh, six or seven airplanes lying abreast, and you're coming, all coming across the starting line, and that first pylon, everyone's looking at and they're looking out of the side of their eyes at everyone else, and uh, you're all going to converge on that first pylon, and something's got to give. With the desert 
going by at 450 miles an hour, 50 feet off the deck, there's not much room for anything but see that the pants start flying. You have to be just become part of the airplane. So much so that, that you can sense the nearness of the ground below, judge your speed by the roar of the wind and the engine, and feel the tremendous buildup of force on the wings as you bank into a turn. Above all, you have, you have to have total confidence in yourself and the airplane. Drop the ball just once, and, and the ground will reach right up and bite you. This was the proving ground for Daryl Greenemeyer and his Bearcat. He met the challenge by winning the unlimited championship race every year for the past four years. Although strong, the Bearcats air race performance is still below the 480 mile an hour speeds required for the world record. So Darrell and his crew work without let up on the last few possible modifications for speed. Finally, with darkness setting in and the record attempt only 18 hours away, the last screw is tightened and the Bearcat pushed out for a test flight. The line leading to the cockpit is very short. The airplane is kind of marginal. It, it takes a lot of work to get it in the air. It's, uh, it's not a very nice handling airplane at low speed. And, uh, it's not even nice handling at high speed, and, and I'm afraid that, uh, that I'm not going to be able to stay on top of it, and someday I may end up, uh, you know, having to jump out of it or bellying it in. On the Bearcat, failure of the smallest part could result in sudden disaster. Right now, the tiny sealed cockpit is the loneliest place in the world for Daryl Greenway. Takeoff appears normal, but then something goes wrong. With the engine throttled all the way back at a dangerously low altitude, Greenemeyer strains every inch of glide from the stubby wings in an effort to reach the runway. feeling to be uh, sitting up there. Uh, uh, you kind of have your, your heart in your throat and, and you expect the engine to seize at any time. Repairs are rushed through and a second flight made with daylight all but gone. Time runs out before a full test can be made, but the brief flight has revealed something unusual. The airplane is, is so highly modified, and of course I did the modifications, and I'm not so sure there are, that the wings are on there straight, for instance. And so when you get going up to high speeds, the airplane flies sideways, and there doesn't seem to be anything to get the thing to go straight down the road. It, it just does it. It just wants to go sideways. At this point, no one knows what will happen tomorrow when the Bearcat is pushed to its speed limit. But one thing is certain. Greenemeyer has locked his sights on the speed record, and he'll fly forward, sideways, or upside down to break it. Air Force Base on the Mojave Desert in California is one of the few locations in this country where a world speed record attempt can be made. Here they have the required measuring equipment and surveyed speed course. At the southern end of the base, out on Rogers Dry Lake, there's a long black strip with measured markers on it.
These markers are exactly one kilometer apart. Greenemeyer will have to go down this strip over the markers two times in each direction, staying below 300 foot altitude. The record is the average speed for four complete passes without landing. He will have to average 477 or better to take the record. And the temperature will be around 110 degrees. The record is possibly just a few hours away. How are you? Well, fine. I uh, wish I had a little more sleep last night. <laughs> but uh, the airplane's looking good. I, I'm a little disappointed with the wind blowing this hard this early because it may get up quite a bit heavier. The airplane is given a final cleanup and prepared for flight. Not much more can be done at this stage. A lot depends on the unpredictable desert weather. We, uh, we picked the hottest time of the year. Well, the problem with this is you, you start running around the desert at uh, 100 feet off the ground. Uh, there's a lot of turbulence, and the wind blows at 30 knots, uh, you know, very easily, practically every afternoon. So it, it gets very turbulent, and it, this really throws you around in the cockpit. And so I took some sponges uh, and rags and, and taped them to my shoulders and I jammed up against the, the airframe of the, uh, the inside of the cockpit so that it, it wouldn't jostle me around so much. With the airplane ready and takeoff only minutes away, calculations are reviewed for the last time. In order to get the required speed, Darrell will have to squeeze close to 3,000 horsepower from the rebuilt engine, what some pilots appropriately call destruction power. In its modified state and with the use of special fuel additives, the engine should be able to put out this tremendous power, but only for very short bursts. Well, the year before, that I tried to break this record, I blew up an engine. Of course, uh, I think about all kinds of things, like uh, if the engine seizes, it's probably gonna yank itself out of the engine uh, mount, and of course, this gives you a bad CG problem where the airplane flutters down like a leaf, and you know, you think about all these things, but, uh, and the biggest problem is uh, the only incentive to push that and torture that airplane is that little tiny piece of paper that says the speed through the course was such and so. There's no one alongside of you, no one pushing you. It's, it's kind of like uh, you, you're competing with yourself more than anything. pressure started fluctuating. I wasn't sure what the problem was, so I just pulled the power off and glided through the course. It's hot. It's so hot I couldn't believe it. I was burning my hand. In fact, I got a blister on my finger from holding on to the control stick. And uh, it's a lot hotter than it was last year. Maybe the stack mod that we did moved the exhaust in closer and it's, it's hotter than a pistol. We made a stack modification to the exhaust pipes uh, to try and get the flame laying along the fuselage rather than sticking out across the wing. And what it amounted to was it, uh, it, it burned all the paint off the side of the airplane, and uh, the cockpit got real hot. There was an exhaust leak coming out of one of the stacks, and, and the exa exhaust was coming down the top of the fuselage into the cockpit and right in on my hand. And of course, my hand was burning. I couldn't hold onto the stick, and I was changing hands back and forth. And, and it was so hot that I thought uh, I must have burnt a hole in the side of the fuselage. The same pattern of last year's failure seems to be repeating. Minor engine trouble and not quite enough speed on the first trip. As Darrell heads for the barrier a second and last time, there's a desperate confidence in the air. If he fails, the cost and effort for a third attempt next year 
would make it impossible. Those involved understand why the German record has stood so long. On the lake bed, the strong wind is like the breath of a furnace. Protected from the baking heat, the precision timing cameras stand ready to record Greenemeyer's last try. Five hundred ten miles an hour, way over three thousand horsepower. Too much power, and the engine could rip itself right off the airplane. Four hundred fifty-nine miles an hour. Now the wind's against him, but that's not all. Power is dropping, and oil temperatures going into the red. The hot engine may start to detonate at any minute. He's got to keep the speed up to come out with a four hundred seventy-seven or better average. Greenemeyer's fighting to keep the left wing up as the Bearcat tries to bank and go sideways. The wings may flutter and tear off at this tremendous overlook. Greenemeyer is flying between the hammers and a hard place. One man sealed into four tons of screaming metal. This is where the test pilot comes out. Clear head and steady hand. We flex against him. One more pass, just one more time. Got it. 454. Average speed, 483 miles an hour. Right now, Daryl Greenemeyer could probably fly the Bearcat straight to the moon with no sweat. who knew better said it was practically impossible. One man, a few friends, and a war surplus airplane had no chance of breaking a record of this stature. Daryl Greenemeyer thought otherwise, and a few minutes ago, he proved his point the hard way. Like Greenemeyer, victory is the only reward these men were after. They've helped to do something they measure as great, and that's what's important. As the fastest propeller airplane in the world, the Bearcat will probably go to a museum. As for Daryl Greenemeyer, his eye is on the horizon for the next challenge.